And the next speaker is uh, Sergi Smetana. Dr. Smetana is head of the Food Data Group at the German Institute of Food Technology. He focuses on sustainability assessment of alternative protein sources and innovative food processing technologies. He is also an expert in data analysis of complex food systems. And he is here with us today to talk about the sustainability of insect production. Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sergei Smitana and I'm going to talk a little bit about sustainability of insect production. I'm going to bring a few examples and I'm going to indicate what potential problems, difficulties there might be. I'm coming from DL, a German Institute of Food Technologies, which is roughly the same age as myself and has currently more than 200 employees and has four main locations. The main location is Quackenbrook, but also we have three networking uh, places in Berlin, Karlsruhe and Brussels. By the form of ownership, we are a registered association, but we act and we work as a research institute. We perform a lot of research. Uh, activities and horizon projects for example but uh, because we are membership based organization we have a lot of member companies on board and they in a great degree direct uh, where we should work and how we should do uh, that's why most of our uh, activities have a uh, very applied industrial application and we are quite proud about that because it allows us to make a difference allow us to see the results and specifically in terms of sustainability. And I'm, I'm a head of Food Data Group and sustainability research in German Institute of Food Technologies is quite happy about that. Your campus is currently quite growing quite bigly and we have a lot, quite a few facilities and not just one building as indicated um, in the previous slide, but maybe later we can talk more about it. DIL is a membership-based organization, as I mentioned, and we have quite a few members. And for example, Prodix is one of our quite active members who we work and cooperate with. And we are, of course, uh, very proud uh, to have such members and to, to work with them. DIL has a new set of expertise, which is coming from the stage of available biomass, biomass production. We don't work much in agricultural stage, though. And then working with the biomass defining safety, the structure, you know, the sustainability, but also looking at the processing stage and again looking from all these parts and targeting health and well being of humans and targeting their yeah, their well being and how they nutritious the food for such for, for people and how sustainable it is. As a sustainability expert, as a life cycle assessment expert, I often work with the complex food systems and uh, this image here illustrates it very well. We have to always consider that the result and the scope of work is not just targeting of okay, the simple inputs and outputs and this specific stage, but also uh, collects the information about the pot potential rebound effects from the whole system, also considering the change of market and potential change of future markets as well. When we're talking, talking about insect, as today is uh, the scope of, of discussion, the scope of presentation, I would like to use this nice diagram, which is produced by the joint uh, by Buller and uh, used in, in joint venture of Buller and Products. And it represents the current state of information on where the insects can be applied and how beneficial they can be. Um, however, there are some difficulties still in terms of using direct waste for the insect production, mostly side streams and good quality feeds which are used for the insect production. Of course, in, our, in the future, we would like to target insect on those growing insects directly for human consumption. And However, not always possible and still quite some difficulties due to legislative state. Um, and what also should be avoided right away, and for that we don't need to perform life cycle assessment, is the direct consumption of agricultural materials which can be used for food and feed purposes. It should not be used for the insect production, otherwise they 
efficiency, otherwise the sustainability is not uh, as it could be. In 2015, we published a study uh, where we uh, did analysis, where we did research and life cycle assessment of different meat substitutes, uh, including those based on insects. And um, of course, it was based on on some modeling, but also on uh, experimental trials. We designed product, we tested it, we see okay, it can be work, it can, uh, we can reproduce certain meat qualities, and that's how we performed, uh, based on that, we performed life cycle assessment. And we were able to indicate that insect based meat substitutes could be quite beneficial. They could be on the range with the plant based materials, you know, with the mixtures of materials and as meat substitutes. That can be quite uh, beneficial, and that became uh, the basis for further research, uh, for further our research, for more life cycle analysis, uh, for work for, with uh, companies like Prodix, for work um, on, on designing new products, new materials. Further, we uh, performed life cycle assessment on the Hermitian on relatively small scale. It was pilot industrial scale and uh, you know, it allowed us to find that there are quite a lot of processes which should be considered. There could be a potential range of different inputs and of course that those inputs were one of the main factors which affected the sustainability of insect production. In 2018, and that our study was published in 2019 in open access, you can see on top right um, side, uh, we performed life cycle assessment of uh, Protex facility, uh, not the newest one, the newest one was opened a bit later after that, uh, where we um, included all the materials for the uh, few years of production, all the resources, materials, uh, all the inputs, and we were able to define uh, their life cycle assessment impact quite uh, precise and uh, yeah and the, the, those uh, results I would like to present right now. So as you can see and maybe it's a good comparison it's a bit complicated table but what we should pay attention to the middle part where the hermetia meal and hermetia puree is presented and hermetia meal should be compared with the results from upper part and hermetia uh, puree results should be presented with the lower part or at least we can try to, to compare it. Uh, so we can indicate that if we are talking about plant-based materials, uh, they usually have lower impact than uh, than those produced with uh, with the insects. However, if we are talking about um, uh, animal-based um, biomass, uh, such as, uh, for example, fish meal in, in many categories could have higher environmental impact, but also egg protein uh, concentrate, microalgae or whey and Fresh meat, those are below, they're having higher impact than those which were received for hermetia meal and hermetia puree. And of course, it's just a preliminary and kind of indicative comparison based on, on multiple uh, studies out there and based on, their, on the results which we got for this specific study of, or for the um, facility and products. As you can see, that's uh, the sources which we used for the previous slide, and I just decided to separate them so we can clearly see what is presented and uh, which studies and which um, factors were used for the analysis. So about more results which we were able to get. So you can see on the left side there are the puree, and the right side meal impacts, and those are integrated impacts with midpoint and point categories. The most important part, we can see that there is a, a huge potential for the improvement of environmental impact for both uh, materials, and um, which is envisaged in the short time, mid time, and long time. And the uh, short time improvement is actually due to upscaling, you know, improvement in the efficiency, um, mid term uh, impacts connected with them. Um, uh, changes into the diet and the switch to the uh, side streams uh, or wastes, as we call it in, in life cycle assessment world, and long term improvements actually switching and changing to the alternative energy sources. But that was envisioned impacts, and um, as it is envisioned, as, as a thought through, uh, actually, some of those impacts could have been changed before. And I know maybe a small of the secret that projects were able to achieve one of those setup goals already. 
and if they want, they can talk more about it. Um, so furthermore, we perform something that is called consequential life cycle assessment, basically looking on potential changes in the market and seeing, okay, what would happen if the market react one way or another way? And again, you can see the puree, which is fresh insects milled in a specific uh, form and a specific product. And on the right side is meal or protein concentrate, which is defatted usually. And you can see that if we use puree and again with the, with the three main scenarios of um, of changing the composting, which is MC, or um, also changing anaerobic digestion, you can see that the environmental impact is dropping dramatically. And of course, the main point but that was that puree could potentially substitute chicken, so kind of for the food production. It's a scenario. Should be, of course, considered that it's a scenario. And uh, in the middle part and, and the right part, you can see that the substitution of just producing and substituting soy meal and fish meal uh, production without avoidance of uh, waste treatment it does not really help. The impact is reduced, but also has high uncertainty rates. Further improvement can really drop down the, um, the production and can drop down uh, the impact of uh, insect production. So a few takeaway messages, just to wrap it up. So uh, hermetical sense production had lower environment impacts than similar sources of animal biomass production. What could help and support insect production? Of course, upscaling, that's what the again, projects are doing right now. There is the application of um, non-utilized size streams, or basically something that is currently discarded as a waste or alternative uh, sources of energy, which could be quite, quite beneficial and not as problematic as you might have think. Um, yeah, the consequential life cycle assessment indicated that uh, you know, the production of insects or hermetic can substitute certain products on the market, but also can avoid certain types of waste treatments, and that is actually quite beneficial. I would like to acknowledge here the sources, uh, the the part, those partners and those funding sources which were able to influence current um, research, which was of course DIL itself, and uh, also big thanks to projects for helping and working with us on specific uh, project, but also financial support was provided by um, uh, quite a few organizations and. Current results and also current work is supported by um, Internet Project Horizon 2020, uh, Susan Chain projects and um, fastest surplus outweighs projects. And we expect to have more and more results. We have, expect to have more systematization of index rather soon. I would like to also to indicate that their next big event, which we are planning, will be in October. And from 13 to 16 October, you're welcome to come, register, it will be online uh, due to Corona problems we had online as well as having this nice uh, webinar, we're also making it online, but if you want to know more, if you want to know about sustainability and food systems, and there will be a few insect presentations, of course, you're welcome to come, join, uh, register, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Thank you for your attention. And it was a big pleasure. Hello, Sergey. That was a uh, really interesting presentation. Thank you for that. And I can see that there's uh, lots of questions coming in. There's a lot of activity going on here. Uh, let me have a look at some of the questions. Um, some of them, uh, like this one. How does insect fat compare to palm oil or coconut oil? Thank you from my side. Very interesting question, and it's coming more and more into discussion and research. Uh, the comparability of insect fat, uh, technical technical comparability, processing comparability, of course, uh, with the sustainability as well. And uh, from our trials, I can tell that first point is that insect fat and insect oils, depending on the species, can really substitute uh, some of the insect fat and oils um, in the food industry, which is very important. For example, food industry is searching for a new sources of uh, uh, fats and oils, which can substitute palm oil and 
coconut oil and it's not that easy the, the, the substitution with the many other plant uh, oils is not simply not working and uh, insect fat and oils uh, in this domain act pretty pretty beneficial from um, processability processing point of view and from sustainability point of view life cycle assessment of course there is a huge uh, variations in terms of, okay where it is produced where it is consumed the transportation waste of course in europe we don't produce palm oil and coconut oil that's why it's mostly transported from asia or other regions and um, here of course when uh, these sources of uh, oils and fats are delivered here they have uh, often quite uh, high um, environmental impact, you know, from carbon footprint, uh, if to believe the studies. And there are quite a few studies that the impact was in the range of 5 to 12 uh, kilograms CO2 footprint per kilogram of uh, oil. While uh, the study which we did for, for example, for Hermetia, for relatively small scale, so let's say not the highest efficiency yet, we are just moving there, was just around 3. Point something, 3.6 uh, to 4 kilograms and with uh, expected improvements. And I know there are already some improvements uh, in terms of energy use. And so we can reach uh, the impact of 2.6 and so on. So um, in terms of environmental, it also could be quite beneficial. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, that was a really good, com complete answer. Um, let's see. Um, ah, this one here. Are insects, even at the current pilot uh, volumes, uh, sustainable? Yes and no. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, I mean, there's, uh, well, let's say from no part, I know because there is nothing ever completely sustainable. Uh, I mean, it's a bit of a, a common use term. So um, they are uh, probably more sustainable than a lot of other sources of uh, proteins and biomass, uh, which is uh, available on the market and which are humans and animals are utilizing so uh, even at the relatively small production scale the impact is uh, better than animal based sources it's just of course there are some variations there are high variations of animal based uh, um, so animal based biomasses animal based sources of proteins for example and we of course have to consider okay how it was produced uh, but uh, as a rule of the thumb, insects are usually more sustainable than animal-based sources of uh, proteins. If we compare on the same scale, so we cannot just take, okay, let's compare um, you know, fresh uh, biomass to, to dried powder uh, and so on. And um, so... And with the expected upscaling, with the expected uh, improvement into efficiency, use of uh, underutilized side streams, um, and the uh, using of alternative energy, that is also expected even higher improvement. So we, I would say, if these three points are followed up by the industry, um, we can get the protein sources which can compete with the plant-based protein sources, for example, with soy, which is amazing just to <laughs> just highlight that yeah yeah thank you um then i have a, a different uh, approach here in this question uh, so this one says fish feed chicken feed and swine feed market they are very competitive how can sustainability be used as a tool to penetrate these markets what are your thoughts on this Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm not really a market expert, first of all, but um, uh, and it's absolutely correct that the, the feed markets are very competitive and it's very, very hard for insect production to enter that area. I would say probably the hardest uh, from all the markets. But it's just my vision. <laughs> uh, but okay. it, actually, it's possible to rely on sustainability as a um, as a marketing tool, as an ingredient, uh, and that was uh, demonstrated very well 
no, no advertisement here, just an example uh, by the, for example, uh, Beyond Burger and Impossible Burgers, uh, who are supplying, again, the ingredient. Uh, what they did, they started using sustainability as an ingredient. So mostly they were selling sustainability to the market and they were penetrating the market and coming with more beneficial, sustainably uh, ingredient, which you know there were quite a lot of out there, but uh, they were really successfully uh, bringing it uh, to the market. And that was a nice success story, which potentially our insect industry can also uh, use for the feed uh, and uh, chicken, swine or, or fish meal uh, substitution, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, then uh, looking at the time, I think we have time for just one more question. And this one is referring to the uh, FIVAC uh, report. So FIVAC just released the Feed Sustainability Charger 2020 2030. Um, do you see possible synergies or possible points where insect industry uh, can address? Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, totally. If you talk, if you asking me, and uh, of course, uh, I mean the, the biggest part of um, that um, report, the sustainability charter, as they call it, um, is devoted to the improvement in greenhouse gases emissions. You know, uh, making more sustainable. Um, including circularity, relying more on some side streams. That's exactly what we were talking for the insect industry for already quite some years, also jointly with projects, saying, okay, we need to find, you know, a, a very good source of uh, um, of a feed of, for the insects uh, first, but also using insects as a, a, as a potential alternative feed for, uh, for other animals. But coming back a little bit, uh, so finding a, a very good source based on um, underutilized or non-utilized side streams, uh, which can dramatically reduce the uh, carbon footprint and you know, carbon footprint and other environmental impacts. And uh, well, that's actually where the biggest part of environmental impact of insects is coming from, because other parts already now becoming quite optimized you know they, there is a use of robotics uh, there is use of high highly efficient processing there's nice packaging or storing and 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 i'm not going to talk about that but that part which would re require to be improved and which would bring the biggest benefits would be finding reliable source of underutilized um IMS, good quality, and uh, well, currently discarded, discarded as waste. Yeah, yeah. yeah. lots of opportunities. Totally, but so that that report or the charter is actually the same as a green deal. Is actually like going in the same stream of of the what is Protex doing very much. So amazing. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you very much. Um, it's time to move on to the next part of the program. That was really great, very insightful. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you from my side.